Hey guys, Spud here, and today we have version 2 of our basic T-Pod and laser guided bomb tutorial for the upcoming BCS F-15E Strike Eagle from Razvam. Now in version 1 of this tutorial we ran into a bit of a bug with the OSB buttons around our MPDs, as well as a bit of a gotcha in the avionics of the F-15E that isn't laid out explicitly in the manuals of the jet. And we're going to go over both today and give you guys the best tools possible to troubleshoot bugs in all of your DCS world modules, as well as explain away the small gotcha, so that way it doesn't affect you guys when you hop into the aircraft. So we have a bit of a situation here. Some Iranian C-130s have landed at an abandoned airstrip in the middle of the Sinai Peninsula to deliver smuggled weapons to various militant groups that call the Sinai Peninsula home. Now the Egyptian government has definitely been having some trouble with these guys, and the USAF has decided to intervene with some F-15E Strike Eagles. So let's hop in the cockpit and get started guys. Alright guys, welcome back to the office of the F-15E Strike Eagle, and we'll hop right into our basics of LGB delivery tutorial. As you can see, we're utilizing an air start for today's tutorial in order to mimic a simple practice mission you may create for yourself in the mission editor upon early access release. And because of the fact that when we air start the F-15E, we have a little extra setup that we need to complete that would normally be part of the cold start procedure for yourself in the front seat on a solo flight or by a Wizzo in the back seat on a multi-crew flight. So let's go ahead and take a look at the basic keybinds that we need to have set in order to get our warheads onto foreheads. We'll hit the escape key on our keyboard and we'll go to the adjust controls option. In our F-15E category, we'll scroll down to our HOTAS subcategory. And please keep in mind guys that all of the HOTAS commands we talk about today are going to be used for many different actions in the cockpit of your F-15E. However, we're limiting the scope of today's discussion to just the basics of laser guided bomb delivery. Also keep in mind guys that today's tutorial is all about giving you guys the basic tools to hop into your F-15E and enjoy it on day one of early access release. You can go as deep into the weeds as you want or as surface level as you want, and there's no problem with any way you like to enjoy DCS world. So starting from the top here, we've got auto, auto acquisition switch forward, and this has two actions that can influence our lantern targeting pod. We have auto acquisition switch forward short, which is a press of the button for less than one second, which steps the lantern pod through three different FOV zoom levels. Those of you guys who fly the F-14 A and B Tomcat on strike missions should be highly familiar with this. Auto acquisition switch forward long will snap the pod back to snowplow mode after being slaved to a particular waypoint. Moving on down the list of our basic HOTAS commands, we have castle switch press, left, right, forward, and aft. Now this is how we take command of a sensor or display in our F-15E's cockpit. It's more or less functionally identical to setting a soy in the cockpit of your F-16C or going sensor control switch right, left, up, or down to take control of a particular sensor or screen in your F-A-18C Hornet. Next, we have our left multifunction switch. This button is super simple. All it does is fire our laser down towards the target to put a laser spot on it for our weapon to use its bang bang guidance to track right into the target and give us a perfect shack. You'll notice I also have this double bound onto my stick as well. I'm currently using a Thrustmaster FA-18C stick grip on my VPC Warbird base. Now the F-15E and the F-A-18C Hornet use more or less the same stick grip. However, the F-15E does not utilize the RAID FOV, FOV FLIR button, and so you have an extra button you can map to whatever you find to be the most useful for you. When we take a look at the stick grip later on in this video, you'll see that the position to actually mount that button is molded into the F-15E stick grip, but it's just not present and used in this aircraft. Moving on down, we have our TDC switch press, which is, uses the same functionality as almost every other aircraft in DCS. It designates the point on the ground, but underneath your crosshairs of your targeting pod as a target. 
Now, we, of course, we also need to have TDC switch down, left, right, and up, of course. However, I highly recommend that you map this to an axis instead of just using an old-fashioned hat switch. This allows you to be much more efficient when moving your targeting pod across the ground because you're no longer uh, limited to just up, down, left, and right in the X and Y axis, but you can also move your pod diagonally across the ground and fine tune your crosshairs on top of your target for the most accurate impact of your LGB. Next, we have the very obvious one of weapon release pickle button. We need to be able to authorize the jet to release the weapon in the auto delivery mode we'll be utilizing today. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's basically all the HOTAS commands that you need for the very basics of dropping laser guided bombs in the Strike Eagle. So let's return to the cockpit and get going. All right. First, we'll go ahead and reduce our pilot workload so that way we can more confidently go heads down in the cockpit. We'll put the aircraft into air-to-ground master mode. We'll hit the A slash P push tile to bring up the autopilot page. We'll turn on altitude hold mode. By hitting the line select key right next to alt hold, we can swap between barometric altitude hold and radar altitude hold. And we can set steer mode to nav, and that will allow the aircraft to automatically fly us to the currently selected steer point. Now that we're pretty much flying the jet hands off, we can go heads down to the cockpit and talk about the systems that we need to interact with to actually deliver our LGBs. One of the big things with the RASBAM aircraft is the fact that when they air start, the master arm switch is almost always set to safe. This is true in the MiG-19, Mirage 2000, and Aviate-B. This is different from other aircraft that we have in DCS that air start with master switch set to arm. This would be kind of annoying when you go to drop a bomb and your master arm switch is still set to safe. So make sure you grab that when you air start. Next, let's take a look at our TSD. We can see on our F-15E's stick grip here that we actually have the position for the RAID FLIR FOV SELECT button molded into the stick itself, but it's just not mounted. So we'll get rid of this guy. We'll zoom out on our TSD a little bit. We'll reduce the brightness, so that way you guys can see a little bit easier. And we can see that we have a target point set in the flight plan of our Strike Eagle. Now we can set a target point in the flight plan of our aircraft through the mission editor by turning the waypoint's name to pound sign capital T. This turns the waypoint into a target point and sets the preceding steer point into a IP or initial point. Target points are always triangles, initial points are squares, and your origination point in the mission, whether at an airfield or an air start, is going to be your home plate symbol with the B for base. Now moving on from that, we need to set up our packs. This is the step that would normally be done as part of your cold start procedure. However, when you air start your F-15E, the packs will not be set up. So we'll go and hit our menu button, armament page, air to ground, for program 1, We'll select our GBU-12s on our right CFT. We'll do an auto release, ripple single, nose and tail for an instantaneous detonation upon impact. We'll step to program two to set up our Mark 82s on our left CFT. We'll go for a C dip release, ripple multiple, nose and tail for instantaneous detonation on impact, quantity of 11 to drop all the bombs with one press the pickle button. And we'll do an interval of 50 milliseconds per, uh, between each ripple impulse. We'll step back over to program one for our GBU 12s. And we'll move over to our T-Pod page. With we'll the menu button, open the T-Pod page on our right MPD. And we'll go castle switch right long, that's a press of one second or longer, to take command of our right MPD with our T-Pod page on it. We know we have command of this page and of the sensor when we see these little vertical streaks at the bottom of the page. Now let's go over the various options that we have around the bezel of our T-Pod page. We can see that our pod is currently armed. Its laser is armed on the second to the left OSB button. 
This is also duplicated on the right hand side of the instrument panel where we can see laser armed. Now in the F-15E we always air start with the laser armed. However, if you find yourself in a situation where it is not armed, the controls for the targeting pod are located just aft of the left hand grip, or hand controller I should say. The laser arm switch is inboard, the FLIR, and the FLIR gain and level knobs are in the middle, with our targeting pod off, standby, and on switch on the outboard section. Moving back to our front seat, we have an OSB button to select automatic lasing or manual lasing. This is what tripped us up in version 1.0 of this tutorial. We had a little bug where the OSB buttons were not working correctly, and this was fixed by uninstalling our preview build of the F-15E and reinstalling it. I've found over the course of my DCS World career that if there's a strange bug that you just can't find a fix to, uninstall your module through the module manager, delete any residual files, and reinstall it, and hopefully your bug will be fixed. This has worked wonders for me in the FA-18C Hornet and the AV-8B Harrier in the past. Now this is also the subject of a little bit of a strange gotcha that is not recorded in the manual of the F-15E that will definitely affect some of you guys in early access release. So let's take a look at it. When we set up our GPU-12s in the packs in air to ground master mode, the aircraft will default to automatic lasing. If we set up our GBU-12s in our packs while in navigational master mode, the pod will automatically default to manual lasing. Now in early access here, I typically like to manually laze in order to reduce the CEP or circular error probability of the impact of my LGB. Moving on, we have our SP or snowplow mode button. Pressing this button will allow you to slave the pod to the various waypoints throughout your flight plan. We'll slave the pod to steer point 2, our target point. We can declutter the field of view of our targeting pod. I don't find this to be all that useful. And then in the lantern pod, we have a really important button. We have the expand button. This allows us to utilize all three FOV zoom levels with the targeting pod. Step through these by pressing auto acquisition switch forward short. If we do not have expand mode box, we can only utilize two of the field of view zoom levels. So just keep that in mind, guys. The T1 button here steps you between the T1 and T2 menus. The T2 menu is used for bore sighting the targeting pod on the ground by the WIZO. This is not functional in this current build of the F-15E. We have our menu button, of course. Then we have our area track, point track, and constantly computed track modes. When attacking stationary targets, area track is going to be the mode that you use most. When using point track, we can influence whether the pod is looking for white contrast, black contrast, or automatic contrast. Keep in mind, guys, that a targeting pod does not know what a tank is, does not know what an infantryman is, or an aircraft parked on the ramp. All it knows and likes to track is just the change in color between two objects on the ground. And this is how you can influence what the pod actually tracks. The second button to the left on the OSB is the target, queue, mark, update portion. This allows you to use TDC Depress to set a target point for delivery of your LGVs, queue another sensor to that point, create a mark point, update the mark point, and back to designating a target. 99.99% of the time, you're just going to want to be in target mode. We can change the pod from air to air to air to ground mode. We can say white hot or black hot mode for our pod. We can switch between manual level and gain and automatic level and gain. This is more a button for your Wizzo in the back seat because he has the knobs for level and gain back there on his left hand console. Then we also have continuous designation. This is for continuously updating the target designation when we're tracking a moving target. Something that's not needed when attacking stationary targets for our basic tutorial today. So let's go ahead and select a target here. We'll go after 
the evil C-130 on the right hand side. I can see a couple of other little blobs in there on the field of view of our pod. It's probably some vehicles and maybe some infantrymen that are down there. So we'll hit TDC depressed to designate a point on the ground there and our autopilot is automatically flying us in towards the target. One thing to keep in mind guys that's very similar to the F-14 Tomcat is when we have our master arm set to arm and we're getting ready to drop our bombs, we always have a hot trigger. So if you pull the trigger instead of pressing the pickle button when you're trying to drop a bomb, it'll be greeted with... I can't tell you how many times I've seen F-14 Tomcat pilots accidentally fire their gun instead of dropping a bomb in DCS World. We'll go ahead and kick the autopilot off as we get closer and closer to our ASL or azimuth steering line, and we can see some additional symbology up on our HUD. We have the segmented box for the field of view of our targeting pod, a diamond for our target point, and coming out of our target point diamond is our ASL. This is a little bit different from other aircraft that we have in DCS, where the ASL is just superimposed across the entire field of view of the HUD. Just like any other aircraft that we have in DCS, we want to fly as close as possible to the ASL or azimuth steering line. I'll we'll start to bring our nose up a little bit, climb back up to around 18,000 feet. And just like the F-14 Tomcat, the maximum altitude at which we can fire the laser for our lantern targeting pod is going to be flight level 250. Above that, you run the risk of accidentally starting a fire in your targeting pod. We'll go ahead and sweeten up our target. Eight seconds to release. We can see our weapon release cue. We'll press and hold our pickle button. 35 seconds to impact. We'll fire our laser at roughly around 15 seconds to impact to allow our weapon to build up as much energy as it falls ballistically down to the target. Fifteen seconds, we'll fire our laser. Five seconds to impact. And Shack. That C-130 is never flying again. Looks like he's lost his wings, and looks like we killed a bunch of the infantrymen that are down there unloading those smuggled weapons. All right. Let's start to search for our secondary target to hit with our next LGB. We'll go ahead and build up some separation out away from our target. Now a lot of people always ask me, is the F-15E difficult to fly? And I would say it's somewhere in the region between the difficulty and the feel of flying the F-A-18C Hornet and flying the F-14B Tomcat. You have all the power of two really big engines and a really big airframe. It's not fly-by-wire like the FA-18C, but it's far more stable and has way less strange aerodynamic quirks that the uh, F-14 uh, is subject to. So I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy flying this aircraft, but it is going to be a little bit more challenging than flying the FA-18C Hornet and the F-16C Viper. So we'll keep building a bit of separation out away from the target area here. Our pod is located on the left-hand side of our jet, so we're going to turn left in order to unmask our pod as quickly as possible to start searching for a new target. We'll switch our pod back over to area track. And we'll locate and target the next C-130 unloading smuggled weapons. TDC press to designate a new target. And we'll fly on in back towards it.
Just like the F-14 Tomcat, the F-15E really requires just a very gentle touch on the controls. It's very easy to over control like the F-14. But like I said, it isn't subject to all the interesting aerodynamic quirks that the F-14 is subject to, such as its spoilers when the wings are extended at low air speeds, or its propensity to get into a spin at high angles of attack. And of course, we aren't plagued with the issues of the TF-30 engine of the F-14A Tomcat. So it looks like we may have come into the target at a bad heading with this cloud cover here. Let's see what we can do about that. Hopefully that won't be a problem for us. It looks like it's going to be underneath our aircraft by the time it's actually time to fire the laser. All right. So we got one minute to release. As you guys can see, a lot of the actions that we do in the F-15E are very similar to the F-A-18C Hornet and the AV-8B Harrier. They're not exactly the same, but they definitely run. And that's because they're all three originally McDonnell Douglas, now Boeing products. So they're definitely going to have some similarities between the avionics layout and the way you go through the various procedures in the aircraft. Right. 20 seconds to release. Ten seconds to release. There's our weapon release cue. We'll press and hold our weapon release button. And weapon away. Also similar to the F-14 Tomcat, when you release a laser guided bomb in the F-15E, you're not going to have to retrim out the aircraft right away you're not going to feel nearly as much of a pull to the left or the right-hand side of the aircraft because of the fact that the CFTs don't have a very long arm between the weapon stations and the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. So dropping a weapon off the F-15E is not going to create a big force on the aircraft pulling a wing down. Beautiful. Nice shack on that C-130. Direct hit and he is obliterated. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was illuminating for you. And sorry, the version one of this tutorial had a little bit of misinformation in it. It was due to a weird bug with the OSB buttons, I believe, and some misunderstanding about that got you with the air to ground and nav mode setup of the LGBs. So hopefully this uh, prevents you from having that same issue and shows you how to get off the blocks running in the F-15E on early access release. So please give us a like and a subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one, guys.